30 минут, да? 30. No, 40. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me. It's a pleasure to give a talk on such happy occasion. So we'll, and this will be a talk. It's like you've seen the title. It's a joint work with Chiang Ha Choi, and everything is published on the archive with all details and references. So I'll try to highlight and outline the main idea, leaving all details to, to the paper. So it's kind of strange that I speak about supersymmetry, but you never know what you will be doing in mathematics like in next half a year or so. So it turned out that Chiang Ha and I became very much interested into this supersymmetric localization. Supersymmetry is it discovered experimentally or not? We don't care because it's a great source of new ideas and it is deeply related to various areas in mathematics. That's my main concern. So, and so let's outline, we have a Hilbert space is a graded, Z2 graded space for supersymmetric quantum field theory, graded by the fermion number operator. And then the main object when we have a supersymmetric quantum Hamiltonian is the Witten index, which is a super trace of Euclidean, part, Euclidean evolution operator, e to the negative beta h bar, h hat, Beta is the inverse temperature, which is the ordinary trace when you insert this parity operator. Obviously, this, if we have a supersymmetric quantum field theory, as Witten first observed, I think that this, the Witten index discusses basically the structure of zero modes. And mathematically, it is related to the index of the Dirac operator, which is associated to the supersymmetry algebra. And it's computed by a supersymmetric localization, the main topic of my talk today. And this is mathematically, again, the infinite dimensional version of the Dustram at Heckman formula, which using, proves localization using equivariant cohomology and certain group action. I will not discuss it, but I will mention analogy with this. So, and we'll consider here the simplest example, n equals one half supersymmetry. So we have classical supersymmetric system with Lagrangian, classical Lagrangian, Hamiltonian, and a single real supercharge, which satisfies the Poisson bracket equals two i, times Hamiltonian. These are graded Poisson brackets because we have a, like, in the usual way. Then quantization is very simple. We have a quantum real supercharge and operator and Hamiltonian is Q square. Then the Witten index can be given formally at least by the path integral where you can see the Euclidean action it should be supersymmetric. Then dx d psi is corresponding supersymmetric path integration measure, which incorporates bosonic and fermionic degrees of freedom. And it can be defined, but we'll discuss it formally. Then the written index is given by the path integral on one side. Then the integration goes over periodic boundary conditions. That's important that Super trace requires periodic boundary conditions in fermions. If you take an ordinary trace or insertion of negative one to F operator requires periodic boundary condition in fermions. Then just a reminder, what is a supersymmetry? Supersymmetry transformation, it is just generated by the supercharge Q. And this is Euclidean version. There is no I, imaginary I disappears. And so this is a supersymmetry 
transformations, the action should be supersymmetric as written here. And then the key fact is the following, which is well known, that consider certain functional of the fields of bosonic and fermionic fields. Then this functional is called an invariant deformation if delta square, if you apply supersymmetry transformation twice, the result will be zero as written here. And then the key fact, which is of course known in finite dimensional case in equivariant cohomology is the following, that the path integral, the path integral, which is written here, which gives the written index, in fact, can be written, you can add the deformation, variation delta V of a deformation with arbitrary coefficient lambda. And as lambda goes to infinity, the integral localizes on a zero locus of delta V. So that's the key idea, which is exactly an analog of the Stokes theorem or a residue theorem as was discussed in the previous talk. And that's exactly how it, how it is. And then it's basically says that equivalently closed form is exact outside the zero locus of corresponding vector field. That's the, in, the precise infinite dimensional analog of this statement. In particular, in the simplest case, when the action is delta V, so that delta square V is zero means that the action is supersymmetric, then the path integral localizes on the zero locus of the action. Action has a kinetic term, so everything localizes on the minimum, on constant loops. And the trivial example known to everybody, I just listed for illustration purposes, is the following. <clears throat> Consider compact spin Riemannian manifold take a negative connection and consider Dirac appearing with levitch with connection. Then we have a Euclidean action. It's supersymmetric. The classical supercharge is classical Dirac, is semi-classical limit of a Dirac operator. Quantum supercharge is precisely the Dirac operator of the Levi-Civita connection. Hamiltonian is Q square. And then the written index given by this path integral where curly M of M is the free loop space of a spin manifold M. This localizes of constant loops and explicit computation done by Luis Alvarez Gomez and other people gives a T.A. Zinger formula for the index of a Dirac operator using a hat genus of a spin manifold. This was outlined by Witten and explained by Atiyah and this, and there are thousands of papers on this subject. This can be pushed very far. You can discuss index of a Dirac operator on loop spaces and for QFT in six dimension. It's, but, all this is a computation of index, which is a topological invariant. We have a beta, inverse temperature, but index doesn't depend on beta. That's the whole purpose of being a topological invariant, whether it is a, just an index, which is very simple, or it could be a Donaldson polynomials. Still, these are topological invariants. Now, the Strange question, can one compute trace of the Euclidean evolution operator, which is a partition function, the full thermal partition function, where you have trace e to the negative one over t temperature times h hat, quantum Hamiltonian, and not the super trace. This, if you try to do it, of course, if you compute trace, then it involves anti-periodic boundary conditions for fermions, everything breaks down, and this looks 
this question looks far-fetched or even just silly. But let's try to continue. And it turns out that one can compute a trace in a very special case when the Witten index vanishes. So if you have a non-example, non-trivial example of a supersymmetric system where the Witten index is non-zero, then that's it. You cannot do, but if the index is zero, then you can do more. Namely, suppose the following, that we have that the Witten index is zero due entirely due to the fermionic degrees of freedom. And suppose this fermion degrees of freedom decouple and you have finitely many zero modes. So the Witten index is automatically zero in a, in a trivial way because there is a zero mode and you integrate Bayesian integral, deep psi is zero. You need to have psi, deep psi to be equal to one. Then another condition, suppose that if you quantize this fermion zero modes, we are considering n equals one half supersymmetry. So uh, the quantization will be Majorana fermions. It's, they could be anomalous, but this can be uh, treated very well. I will not discuss special features. You can consider n equals one supersymmetry. One half is the simplest. And since it, it is related to a Zinger index formula, I'm doing one half. Just and suppose another condition that the product of fermion operators is precisely the parity operator. Then it's kind of trivial that the super trace, if you insert these observables, and sorry, there is negative beta everywhere, exponent negative beta h hat, the super trace with insertion of observables equals to the trace of evil Euclidean evolution operator. That's what we want with a negative sign, which means. And then this trace equals to a path integral with periodic boundary conditions. But trace is not a, a pure path integral as for the super trace, because if there will be no zero mode insertions, the path integral would be zero. You have insertions, so this is meaningful expression, non-zero equals to the trace, but this integrand is no longer supersymmetric because, because if it was supersymmetric, then it wouldn't depend on beta, but we know that the full partition function depends on beta. So what to do? Here I explained that since the, in this zero mode, this insertion of zero modes make this observable, you integrate over not supersymmetric, delta of this product is not zero, then localization simply doesn't apply. So, but then we can assume something extra. We can, as, suppose you have fermion zero modes applying, if you apply a supersymmetry transformation to each zero mode, then the result doesn't contain that degree of freedom. In other terms, if you write this Bayesian integral, it will be zero. And second, well, second condition is standard. You consider a deformation. So if you apply super symmetry transformation twice, you get zero, that's standard. And the third condition is that this deformation doesn't contain fermion zero modes. So this integral is zero, Bayesian integral, and it's super, and super symmetric transformation applied to V also doesn't contain zero modes. Condition A is rather natural, B is standard, and C is a new requirement. And this says, in particular, that the standard supersymmetric deformation we use, everybody uses in deriving, say, a Zinger formula is no longer applicable because C is violated. 
So what C requires, C requires that V contains higher derivatives of fields because the usual supersymmetric deformation is X dot times Psi. This condition C requires that V contains derivatives of fermion fields, of fermion degrees of freedom. And then if this can, then we have a very simple formal statement that which is the localization principle, which allows to compute a trace and not a super trace. Namely, suppose you have Euclidean action of the supersymmetric theory. It has finitely many fermion zero modes, which satisfy the above conditions. One, two, and A. A is natural. Supersymmetry transformation of a zero mode doesn't contain this zero mode. Then for all lambda, this path integral equals to path integral, which depends on lambda. If the deformation V satisfies condition B and C. Now that's precise analogy. Well, it's a kind of extension of the standard localization the principle, which is equivalent, which is statement about equivalently closed forms. And then in particular, if we have a system quantum system in which bosonic and fermionic degrees of freedom decouple, then the super trace, so it means that quantum Hamiltonian is a sum of two. So, and then the super trace of this product is pre factors as a product of traces. And if say fermion degrees of freedom are trivial, this, so this fermion Hamiltonian is just zero. Then this becomes one and the super trace with insertion of the quantum Hamiltonian is precisely the bosonic trace. So in this way, one can obtain a pure bosonic trace formula by localizing the supersymmetric path integral in the limit lambda goes to zero. It localizes to the zero locus of deformation V. So that's rather general scheme. And of course, one may ask whether this scheme is meaningful or it is empty. And it's quite interesting that this scheme has meaningful applications. And really in special cases, we see that these conditions one, two on fermion zero modes and A, B, C on deformation and zero modes are rather special. Then another special condition that boson, bosonic and fermionic de degrees of freedom decouple. Well, you can relax this condition somehow, but in the crude form, these are the very special condition. But somehow there are meaningful examples. And so that's what I would like to do to illustrate. But that's the general principle. Of course, this is formulated. It is formulated for n equals one half supersymmetric quantum mechanics, but this can be done for any supersymmetric quantum field theory for n equals one. It's more elaborate, but it's not, but this is like the simplest example. If you cannot do this example, then of course it doesn't worth into going further. So example. And the first example is kind of interesting, which gives a supersymmetric derivation of Poisson summation of formula. This is a localization principle when our we consider supersymmetric particle on a group manifold. The group is just a circle, U1. So we consider free supersymmetric particle with Lagrangian, not just free particle. It's Minkowski Lagrangian, so it's I, it's physical time. Q is supercharged. These are graded Poisson brackets. The Hamiltonian is just P square. So Hamiltonian is P square. Then the Witten index is obviously zero. On any group manifold, the Witten index is obviously zero because we have a fermion zero mode, just constant term of Fourier expansion. Now the quantum supercharge is P 
psi p, capital P is momentum operator on a circle of, of quantum particle, and quantum Hamiltonian is one half capital P square, it's just Laplace operator on a circle, one half, one half of Laplace operator. Then partition function is the trace. We know the spectrum, it's just the sum over Z of these exponents. So it depends on beta in highly non-trivial way. Now, there's the spectral computation of the trace. Now, what about super what about computation using path integral? And here is analogy, like we have in linear algebra, and then we have in Selbeck trace formula, it's still same analogy, which says, like in linear algebra, that the spectral trace of a matrix equals to the matrix trace. Spectral trace is the sum of the eigenvalues. Matrix trace is the sum of diagonal elements. Now, if you push it further for Laplace operate on manifolds, then the spectral trace of the heat kernels is the same, sum of the eigenvalues. And the matrix trace, you take the heat kernel on a diagonal and integrate over the manifold. And it turns out in special cases when the manifolds are hyperbolic, in particular a human surface, in this way you get Selbeck trace formula, where the matrix trace is a sum over closed geodesics, where an spectral trace is the sum over eigenvalues of Laplace operator. So this is a spectral trace. Now the path integral is the analog of a matrix trace, as it should be, because Path integral gives you a matrix, infinite dimensional matrix, if you like. So now using path integral, same partition function is a super trace, just one zero mode. So we are considering this path integral. We're integrating a tangent bundle to the loop space of a circle with reversed parity in the fibers, right? If you like, but although, well, physicists don't write this because I write this for mathematical rigor, but, it, but in fact, one can make sense of this measure, what it means, but it will lead us so far away. So it's even doesn't worth to do it. Now we have a localization principle. This setup satisfies all conditions one and two, these zero modes, because variation of chi doesn't contain chi. Then you consider corresponding deformation, which contains higher derivatives. Standard deformation would be x dot times psi, integral of. And the new deformation will be x double dot times psi dot. And sorry, this is not capital T, this is beta. This another type, this should be from zero to beta because, and this is from zero to beta. Then this path integral doesn't depend on lambda. When lambda goes to zero, you everything localizes on a zero locus of delta v. Delta v, if v is this, it's easy to compute that delta v is this formula. And this is positive definite x double dot square, second derivative x square. Then it localizes exactly on classical trajectories, x double dot equals to zero. These are geodesics, classical trajectories. And then one can compute partition function exactly. Well, this is the computation, it's in the paper I'll skip, but the result is you start with a spectral, trace, doing path integral, doing localization. You get a delta function of x double dot. You write it as a, well, first of all, you remove constants, you path to the based loop space because x double dot equals to zero means x of t is c plus a plus b t. You can reduce arbitrary constant a by passing from loop space to from free loop space to the base loop space. And you get two pi, the volume of uh, your group. And then you get this delta function. It's sum over all solutions by usual formula. You compute elementary determinants and functions, and you get this formula where you get one over beta. These are just classical action computed on geodesics. 
And this is precisely Poisson's summation formula. So, and, and it, it is known, well, actually, that in Poisson's summation formula, left-hand side is a spectral trace, right-hand side is a matrix trace. And this matrix trace is precisely supersymmetric localization of certain path integral, which is Jacobi inversion formula. This is Jacobi inversion formula. It is equivalent to Poisson summation formula. So that's the first test. Now, the second test is what happens if we consider a, instead of U1, consider a simple compact Lie group G. Can we obtain the analog of localization? And it's interesting that in doing so, we discovered a reference to some totally forgotten paper by Soviet mathematician Eskin. He wrote a paper, this paper, in 1962, where he obtained actually a, and a short announcement in Uspehi Matnauk. And in this paper, Eskin obtained a remarkable formula which generalizes Poisson summation formula to the case of Jacobi inversion formula to the case of arbitrary groups for the heat kernel of Laplace operator on a Lie group. Then this formula was rediscovered by many people, by Marinov and Tirientiv, then by other physicists, and then by mathematicians, by Igor Frankel, by Jean-Michel Bismut, and so on. Here, I'll just briefly indicate how to get this formula by a localization. Then I would like to include the third example, which would be Selbrick trace formula. But this is still work in progress, so I cannot report anything on this. So I'll instead I'll discuss this, which is rather illuminating. Since it and really this paper is very nice and this was totally forgotten. Now I think it has one or two references. And we found from one physics report, then the author knew of this of this paper. Now, here we consider just a supersymmetric particle on compact simple Lie group with this Lagrange. And here is the catch. You shouldn't use levi civita connection because it's kind of, because in, if you do levi civita connection, bosonic and fermionic degrees of freedom don't decouple. Instead, you consider there are two special connections on the Lie group, flat, one is left invariant, another is right invariant flat connection. They have torsion, but we don't care. Torsion is fine. So we have this Lagrangian. So this is not levi civita This is in a standard psi is a tangent vector at the path. Then it's much easier to use Cartan moving frame formalism, introducing current in the Lie algebra and transforming bold psi which leads to a tangent to a Lie group, to a tangent to a Lie group at identity, which is a Lie algebra with reverse parity. And then in this form, fermion and bosonic degrees of freedom totally decouple. That's the advantage. Then one can get nice expression for real supercharge. Then there is a simple formula for classical Hamiltonian exactly as dictated by supersymmetry. Then just a Hamiltonian of a free bosonic particle. Because it's, then this can be obtained nicely using Dirac brackets on the reduced phase space. P and X are bosonic degrees of freedom. And this is Poisson bracket for fermion, for fermions. Then quantization is also very simple and just L2 on a group with B invariant measure with her measure and times Clifford module, fermion, Hilbert space. Then this are uh, graded commutator. This is anti-commutator, of course, this is commutator. And then the supercharge is what is called cubic Dirac operator of constant. It has nice, this, pre and what is nice in this, where F, A, B, C are um, structure constants, totally symmetric. Therefore, this Dirac operator Q hat, there is no problem of ordering in this way because psi anti-commute and this is totally symmetric. 
then you, you mark you, the sorry, fact. sorry. For psi hat, it's anti-commutator, right? Yes, yes. I, I said everything is graded. I'm writing Poisson bracket, yes, it yes. is graded. I'm writing like angle ordinary square brackets. They mean commutator or anti-commutator. It depends what you put inside them. So it's graded, of course. This is graded. This is plus. But I, I'm not writing. We are not writing plus or, or minus. It's just graded, graded commutator. Then the Hamiltonian, it's another simple computation, which is nice, which gives you precisely Laplace operator on the Lie group, second Casimir, plus certain term which is proportional to identity operator. And this certain, this constant term is precisely the so-called David term which is notorious when people quantize, say, particles on curved spaces, as they say, they realize that actual quantization should include terms proportional to curvature. And they were introducing these terms by hand, saying that this is a quantum correction to the path integral. And there is a many, many papers on this. But in this, in our example, supersymmetry gives this so-called David term quite naturally. It, everything comes canonically so, from su super algebra, from condition that H hat is Q square. This condition and everything is, the David term comes naturally and, and from this. Now, zero modes. Well, there are n zero modes, dimension of the group. Then you compute the super trace. It's the trace of the heat kernel. This is heat kernel. And then you, this is a correction which is needed, so-called David term. And one can do more. One, instead of trace, one can even compute matrix elements of the heat kernel because heat kernel depends on two group elements, but since everything is being variant, you need to compute heat kernel between identity element and Cartan. And so this H, E to the H is Cartan, little h is in a Lie algebra, in Cartan Lie algebra. And then it turns out one can compute this nicely, where H, then you consider the corresponding Euclidean action, I, I will kind of uh, sketch it, the supersymmetric deformation. It involves currents, derivative of current. So in terms of group elements is second derivative of G and first derivative of Psi. Then all this after, then the integral localizes to the classical solutions, the zero locus. And they are described geodesics from point identity element to e to the h. When h is, and here h is arbitrary, but to make life simpler, we would like to have that this locus, critical locus, consists of isolated points. And these points will be isolated if h is a regular Cartan element meaning that it's in a product with roots is non-zero for all roots, for all roots. And if H says zero, then this is the most degenerate case. Then one can do similar computation, but then the zero locus will consist, will be a variety. They will be non-isolated critical points. Then, so that's what is said here, isolated geodesics, and one computes the super trace. One computes the super trace, and, and this is the remarkable formula for the super trace, a computation using localization. Here, R plus the set of positive roots. Now, gamma runs through the characteristic lattice. It's like two pi dual to the root lattice, core root lattice, or simply a lattice, which consists such that the torus, the Torus is obtained from Cartan, is a quotient of Cartan subalgebra by this lattice. T is a maximal torus here. And from the other side, you have, so that's the localization, this formula. 
This formula is a spectral decomposition of the heat kernel, kind of trivial decomposition. Here it uses representation theory. This is obtained, product is obtained using veil dimension formula. These are other and then we obtain the Eskin formula. This is the Eskin formula for the heat curve, where beta is a half sum of, of, of positive roots. If you write heat kernel as a spectral decomposition, then you obtain certain relation which involves, involves on one side, on a spectral side, it involves all irreducible representations of G and their characters. And on the other side, it involves sum of a characteristic lattice and with this factors where you get one over B. So this is Eskin summation formula. And I think it, and one can consider the case, the case H goes to zero, just computing the trace of the heat kernel, which is proportional to the value of k at identity, then you go h goes to zero. And then we see that here we need many, you need to use L'Hopital rule. Here you need in order to consider the limit h goes to zero, you need instead of summing over characteristic lattice, you can split this sum as summing first over the vial group and then over the remaining cosets, then passing H to zero would be simple, would be kind of natural. Otherwise you get like zero over zero type of thing. So doing this, one can obtain formula also for the trace. And as I said, the ultimate goal is to get more interesting formulas when there is a, a discrete group action on the manifold. This is work in progress. I, if I could say something, I would, but I rather not to. So I think that's basically what I was planning to say. And so this is the spectral representation and this is Eskin summation formula. And now I would like to say, поздравляю с днем рождения Леню и Никиту, желаю успехов, всех благ, здоровья, и чтобы увидеться еще через пять, а потом через десять лет. Happy birthday. Thank you. Спасибо. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions or comments? Sure. Uh, so, uh, uh, well, I have two questions. Uh, first question, well, as far as I understood, you reproduce by your method uh, this uh, non-trivial Eskin formula. So do you hope uh, to be able to, uh, to obtain some new results uh, by your method, which uh, are not yet known? Second question is that I, uh, well, I was not familiar. I didn't know this Eskin formula. Uh, the question is, does a similar formula exist not only for group manifolds, but also for the causes, for example, for S2? Uh, SU2 is S3, but can one write a similar formula for the uh, partition function on S2? Okay. Yes, actually for the second question, the answer is yes. If G is compact, then of course on the homogeneous spaces, yes, for S2, exactly. And actually physicists knew this formula for, they knew, well, after asking, I think it's Schiffman wrote it in, without knowing about Eskin work for SU2. And then of course the physicist wrote it for S2. It can be obtained by this method, of course. Regarding the what's regarding other examples, we first it's like we are training this method for to get results which are known but of course this works for uh, one plus one qft for conformal field theories one can get formulas also using bosonic trace formulas using localization using some for wz w models for instance also one can do another interesting thing one can do 
non-compact Lie groups, if you consider different metric, say Sasakian metric, when you replace one minus by plus roughly. So for SL2R, for instance, your Casimir has signature plus, plus, minus, replaced by plus, plus, plus. Then you get only left invariant metric, not a B invariant. And then it has a nice heat kernel, which probably can be worked out by this. So there are many developments, but as for now, the answer is that we are just training our formula on the examples which are known. And we want to get Selbeck trace formula. Uh, can you send this reference to Schiffman's work? Well, or, or maybe it's in your paper. I think it's in our paper. I'll check. We refer to, to Schiffman, to Marinov, to Rentif, and all other people, of course. We, we try to refer to, to, to yeah. have a complete set of references. Okay. Okay. Maybe we missed somebody there, but then it would be nice to add it here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, can I ask? Yes, yes. Uh, hi, Leon. Glad yes. to see you. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, if I understood correctly, uh, you say that a necessary and sufficient condition to um, get exact results is to have a supersymmetric system with zero index, right? Well, I cannot say necessary and sufficient. I can say that this method works when the when supersymmetric index is zero. Then you uh -huh. hope to get something. You see, from zero, you can get a lot of things. If you can divide zero by zero in a yeah, clever sure. And that's, that's what we are doing. If you if your index is non-zero, say two, that's it. You cannot get okay. Uh, then I have two questions. Uh, first is um, very um, uh, uh, unclear. I mean, in in a finite dimensional case, we know that the situation when uh, practically all indices vanish is when the dimension of the manifold is odd. Yes. Uh, can you guess what is an analogous thing for infinite dimensional case? I mean. Some, uh, something which guarantees that the index is odd before any computations. Well, you mean in, in our case, even for S1, the index is... No, 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 no. It's not about the uh, word sheet. Oh, okay, so you are talking about not quantum mechanics, but QFT. So... Uh, anything, yeah. Yeah, uh, then you see it I becomes mean, more, I mean, uh, more, uh -huh, uh -huh. more complicated. It's like then here, our like standard index was the index of a Dirac operator. Yes. I think you are talking about index of a Dirac operator. For example, on, or- On the loop space, oil, on the loop space. Euler, uh, Euler characteristic, which is um, zero in odd dimensions, anything. Actually, all the indices which you, you can compute from the heat kernel methods in finite dimensions. Uh, are, odd, uh, are zero in odd dimensional yes, yes. manifolds. Uh, yeah, the infinite dimensional analog of this would be, you consider the like not loops. Here we have loops on a manifold. Now you want to do quantum field theory. So you consider Dirac operator say on a loop space. For example, yeah. yeah. And then it becomes kind of, uh, Tricky because what is even and odd? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I can not ask. <laughs> right, yeah. So your question is, what is like even and odd for the loops? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I the... think maybe well, this the, we we tested our method for the loop space for Dirac mm -hmm. operator in the loop. Space. It's in principle works, but of course one needs to understand. The uh -huh, uh -huh. I cannot say right now. Maybe in Witten's paper where he discussed, he mentions even odd when the loop space is even dimensional or odd dimensional. Mm -hmm. When That's, the index uh -huh. vanishes automatically. I, I see, yeah, yeah. Uh, may I ask a second question? Uh, I'm afraid we should continue because we, uh, it, it's time for, for the next talk, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>